goes. He lays out and makes the catch. And we are back for a surprise episode of the Double Switch Podcast. Uh, Merry Christmas to uh, everybody watching, to all of Philadelphia, because we got an early Christmas present today. Long time Phil, Aaron Nola, is back. He got paid. Um, not as much as we kind of thought he would, but he got paid no. nonetheless. Uh, we're happy. I'm sure he's happy. Dave Dombrowski's job just got way easier this offseason because that was at the top of the list. I know we haven't done our free agent preview yet, but Replacing Aaron Nola would have been a major pain in the ass. Um, and now we, we don't have to do it because he's back. Uh, he passed up money to come back, which you love seeing. That's a la Cliff Lee in 2010. Um, yep. And he's a Philly for life now. I mean, I'm going to go from watching Aaron Nola my sophomore year of high school, and I guess I'm going to be 31 when, <laughs> in, in the last year of his deal. Um, that's insane. Absolutely insane. But today is a good day. Yeah, Aaron Nola is the pitcher of our generation. I mean, we we saw him from the minor leagues from when he got drafted, and we're going to see 16 years of his career. So uh, congrats to Aaron for signing the deal. Uh, like you said, uh, if replacing Aaron Nola would have been really hard. We've talked about that a lot. And it's a really competitive pitching market because all the contenders need arms this offseason. So uh, for Dombrowski to get that done early before the other arm, the dominoes fell, is huge. Takes a lot of pressure off off of us. Let's talk about the deal first, um, because sure. that's obviously the biggest implication here. Seven years, hundred and seventy two million dollars. Uh, I we I don't think we have specific numbers on what he was looking for um, in spring training. It was closer to two hundred, from what I understand. We were closer to one fifty. Um, the seventh year was a big talking point because he really wanted it, which as um. As a pitcher who's getting older, you do want to just extend the the life of your baseball career as much as possible. The seventh year is probably the most important detail here. Um, he wanted it. We didn't really want to give it to him. Uh, but we conceded that uh, in favor of him taking a little less AAV per year. I think it comes out to $24.8 million, which is – if you look across baseball and what kind of tier we think Aaron Nola's in, um, the high – high two, low one type tier. Um, that tier is full of pitchers who are making 25 to $30 million. Um, and a lot of the people who were getting deals like that, uh, Carlos Rodon comes to mind, they didn't have the track record he did. Um, so for him to kind of take less money to make it work uh, with our, you know, financial um, obligations that we have coming up as a team, um, it's, it shows a willingness from both him and this front office to really want to get this done. And ultimately, I mean, if you would have told me that seven years, 172 is what it's going to cost to get Aaron Nola back after letting him go to free agency. I mean, that's the important part. We, we kind of let him talk yeah. to other teams and he still comes he back for that money. I'm happy with that. You know, I mean, this could have easily been a situation where we got into a bidding more and um, we don't know what he could have got. He, I, I'm sure he could have got more at the end of the day. I mean, I mean, I think you probably saw the reports, but Heyman reported that Aaron Nola did have more money on the table from other teams, um, and he did choose the hometown discount. You got to think he had like a lot of five-year, like thirty million AAV, AAV deals for like one eighty. I bet you a lot of teams were trying that, but the Phillies, like they did with Turner, like they did with Harper, they're willing to go the extra years to get the guy, and uh, they've showed that again. Uh, they're they're not worried about seven years from now they're worried about next year and whatever it takes yeah whatever it takes um this is a deal here where you want aaron nola to give you the bulk of the value in the first three or four years of this contract uh, this is the formula we've been following for a while now i mean trey turner's just another prime example of a guy who mm -hmm. uh we'll we'll pay him longer but we'll pay we'll pay him less right now and it allows you to kind of build a team that um, like we have all these guys now, these these guys that could be making a ton of money per year. Um, like they like Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer, those type of deals. I mean, they're popular in baseball too, but we're not designing a team um, a, like with that type of strategy. And it's it's interesting because it's kind of like an original idea. I think this is something that you know Dave Dombrowski is really realizing can be an advantage for us. Um, obviously, there's going to come a time where all of these deals. 
Uh, we're going to have to deal with the bad part of giving players excess years. But you're looking at a window here where um, Bryce – it's – it's around Bryce Harper's window. I mean, that's what we've always yep. been designing this team. Um, 30 to 35 year old Bryce Harper, you want to put continual winners around him. And how do you do that? I mean, you get the best talent possible and we're getting that talent now um, for a little less money. Uh, but when, when Bryce is older, when Aaron's older, um, they won't be good deals, but you know, you're, you want to win now. And that's the main goal with signing Aaron Nola. And um yeah, I mean, it, it was one of those situations where the longer we waited, the more unappealing the other options got. Uh, you kind of we talked about this. I want to say in July or August because we we knew the time uh, the clock was ticking on Aaron Ola, and um, you had guys who were like interesting. But you know, we get to the off season and you look at what Aaron Ola gives you year in and year out, and there's just not an easy way to replicate that with what's available right now. There's good pitchers out there, but they can't give you what Aaron Nola gives you, which is – it's very unique what he offers. But um, replacing that would have been really hard. And um, just to get it over with early in the offseason, it's uh, it makes our jobs easier because our offseason pod, our, our free agency preview is going to be a breeze now. Um, but it's just one less thing to worry about. Yeah, 100%. And you're right. Uh, it's just – it's the type of thing you don't see in baseball much. A guy like Aaron Nola, his makeup of, as a pitcher and his durability. Um, we see arm injuries kind of rising uh, year over year, and he puts up 200 innings every year. That's what he does. Uh, we would have learned if he left how hard that is to replace. Uh, I know he's not perfect all the time, but uh, he he fights for us every, every time he goes out in the mound. It doesn't always end up like he wants to, but he loves the city. And um, I think that's the big thing, the big takeaway. Um, none of these deals are possible if the players don't want – they all want to build a winner. They want to be a part of a winning team, and they are willing to take that that per year discount if that means that they can have a really competitive team every single year. It's pretty selfless, and it's really great to see. Yeah, high-character guys is kind of what we have here. Um, these are guys – uh, I don't want to give them too much credit because once you get into like the hundreds of millions of dollars, like 10, 15 million dollars, it doesn't really matter that much to these guys. Um, but to kind of really want to be a part of a culture and contrib- contribute on kind of another level instead of just chasing the the optimal paycheck, um, it shows guys that are here to um, here for the team and not for themselves. Uh we um, were assembling just a clubhouse and a culture of high character guys. And um, it's a winning formula. It, it always has been. You guys, you want guys who uh, want to go out there for each other and you, you want them to contribute to the bigger goal, which has always been to bring a title to Philadelphia. And if you're Aaron, I mean, you have your team, you have the team here. These are guys you've known your whole life. JT's the catcher you've been pitching to pretty much your whole life. Um, the the money's great and everything and the familiarity is um is is also great but like what what team really gives you a chance to win better than us right now i mean sure the Braves and everything but then you're going to a competitor um you're uprooting and it, it felt like i i honestly i, I never said this because i it might not have aged well but i don't think he ever really wanted to leave and i don't think he really ever planned on it you know i think he had to yeah. i think he had to bluff his way into um a respectable amount of money that he thought he deserved. Uh, but yeah. you know, I just, I don't think he wanted to leave. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who wants to, he wants to do that. He wants to be comfortable and he's been here his whole life and uh, he knows what he's going to get here in Philadelphia. Um, and you're hundred percent spend, right. spend the rest of his career here now. Yeah. I think you kind of have to like, I mean, hitting free agency for the first time. I mean, he kind of, we signed him on a bargain. I, what was like 40 or 44 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or something like it was a very it was a steal deal for it was great for the Phillies. Uh, they got a lot of value out of it for sure. But I think Noel just I mean his agent probably wanted him to play the game a little bit and see what money's out there. Naturally, I mean you only hit the free agency market so many times, and that's kind of like your opportunity to cash in. But I do have the big question for you, Josh. And I think we've been a little conflicted over over uh, the past couple of months about the question: uh, How do you think Aaron Noel is going to age as a pitcher? I don't think I've been con- conflicted. I think I've been pretty adamant that I think he's going to age per- like like fine wine. Um, no, we are on the same page. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I've always I've always taken that stance. It's for me, it's just clear as day. Like this is a physics problem. Um, guys who rely on their fastballs 
tend to tend to lose velo as they get older and and they have to kind of redefine themselves. Aaron, Aaron yeah. Noll has never done that. He has never really had a fastball that evoked any type of fear in in hitters. You know, it's always been 92 to 94 um with mechanics that have shown a tendency to uh to limit kind of the injury risk. It's it's a it's a unique kind of pitching delivery but it works really well uh, it's not super whippy and it, it allows for a ton of movement and once pitchers get to that age where they can't really rely on their velocity anymore what do they do they develop more movement they have pitches that uh, they rely on control and movement more than velocity and just overpowering hitters Aaron Ola is already that type of pitcher um, so he's not going to have that stage where he has to learn how to pitch with lower velocity he's been doing his whole life um do I think that he's going to be able to maintain like a low threes ERA and just be this high two kind of pseudo ace that we've had for the past couple of seasons? Probably not, but I don't think there's a cliff coming for Aaron Nola um, because I don't think that the velocity is going to go anywhere. It's just you can maintain 90 miles an hour as you get older. And honestly, once he starts losing velocity, that movement might get a little better. I've seen that before too. You know, I think, I think he'll be fine. Um, it, it just won't be high upside, high high end pitching the whole uh, term of the contract. It's just going to be a reliable starter who can find ways to get outs year in and year out. And I think that's okay. I think he's a crafty guy, and I 100% agree with basically everything you just said there. Um, just happy he's back in the pinstripes, man. <laughs> I, I, I too. It would have really, it, it really stunk seeing him play for Braves, Cardinals, any of the NL like rivals that were in on him. Uh, it feels really good to have him back. Uh, I did not want Aaron Nola to be a brave. I didn't want to hate Aaron Nola and I hate the Braves. So thank goodness, yeah. Aaron, you made, you made a great decision and uh, I'll, I'll buy a new Aaron Nola jersey to pay it back. I think I already have two. I don't, I don't know if I have room for another one, but um, yeah, I'm with you. It's uh it's a really good day here. And I, I can't help but wonder how this would have gone differently because I think the plan always was Andrew Painter comes up and Andrew Painter develops into that high, high rotation pitcher. Um, the plan was last year to bring him into the rotation. And I think this year they were kind of counting on him to, to be that fallback to Aaron Nolan. Once he got hurt, I think I just thought that the signing and him returning was inevitable. Um, we don't have any better options and, with these guys, I mean, you already have Wheeler who's becoming a free agent. And uh, with the younger guys coming up, the Abels, the Painter eventually, Christopher Sanchez, um, they're, they're very good and they can get outs, but you're not going to have the 200 inning capability right out of the gate that uh, you know a veteran pitcher gives you. And who complements them better than Aaron Nola, who is just the – he's the inning eater of all inning eaters. Um, just to know that you're going to get – uh, what's 200 times uh, 1400 innings over the next seven years. Uh, there's just value in that alone. The peace of mind that it offers um, it's going to take pressure off of the younger guys. It's going to take pressure off of the bullpen. And um, it really does have a domino effect here because he is a key, right. key personnel that has not always gotten the credit that he's, he has deserved, but he's very, very important. And this pitching staff needs him and he's back. That, that was well said because, as I mean, I saw they're trying to extend Wheeler, but Nola is going to be that rock. He's going to be that rock in the rotation uh, while we try to, in the next five years, become a younger rotation. When we see the Ables, the Painters, uh, those guys are high velocity guys, more tendency to get injured, obviously. Um, Nola is going to be very, very important. And I think uh, Ranger Suarez as well. I think I, I think he'll get an extension before we know it. Uh, yeah, Josh. I mean, right. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, you got it, man. Uh, Ranger has a couple years left. And, I mean, Wheeler, this is the last year of Wheeler's deal. And um, as much as I'd like to sit here and say that extending Zach Wheeler is a given, um, that is tricky, tricky, tricky stuff here because he's going to be 35. And the difference between Wheeler and Nola is Wheeler has been through free agency before. Um, it pro like everything that sounds uncomfortable about you know selling yourself to teams and going through all of that. Wheeler's done it, um, and mm. Wheeler's value will never be higher if he puts up another season like you know we think he will. Um, he's going to be like he he he's already in the conversation for top five pitcher. Um, 
understand. It's not it's not going to be as easy for Wheeler and having Nola here. I know Nola's probably not as good as Wheeler right now at this point in their careers, but just having that guy who can kind of front your rotation, um, it's more leverage for once Wheeler hits free agency as well. Um, and that's just like a little side effect, but I think I threw, I figured I'd throw it in there. Yeah, ten thousand percent. I guess just the last thing I wanted to hit on while while we're on here, uh, what's this mean? for the rest of the off season. Do we shake up any more of the rotation? Do we see trades signings to kind of solidify the back end, or do we just shift over to offense? Um, not to spoil our upcoming episode too much, uh, because we're going to have, we're, we're have some great ideas. Uh, I, I have them all written down. Um, obviously I, I totally just haven't put it off, but uh, don't worry. I, I will, I will be ready. Um, yeah. It, 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 it was the biggest thing on our to-do list. Uh, for sure. Payroll's rate at like 252 million. I know the next threshold that they don't, they probably don't want to go past is 257 million. Um, because I think you're talking draft picks after that point, And you, you really don't want to mess with what Brian Barber's doing uh, with the farm system. Yeah. So I think it's, it's probably going to come from trades. I think we can kind of expect Dombrowski to get creative. Uh, I don't know where the excess payroll is going to come from. Um, but there are some guys here that are making money that might not be, you know, giving us the value that we need. Um, but I, I would expect some trades, maybe another bullpen piece, another right-handed bullpen piece. Um, and I think probably another right-handed bench bat is, is – yeah, that's got to be towards the top of the list, a disciplined bench bat that can play um, – play some corners, play, play maybe first base when uh, Bryce needs a day off or something. But um, yeah, I don't think, I don't think anything's going to happen. Like what happened today? Um, I think this probably rules us out for, um, I think it rules us out for Yamamoto. I know that's a debate. Uh, Yamamoto. Um, I think there would have to be money moved. Yeah. I think it rules us out for Sonny Gray. Um, yeah. But you know, all that can change with one move. Would you tend yeah, to I mean, kind of agree with me on that? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, you, there's a couple guys in the, on our top of our my head, uh, which we'll hit on next episode. That uh, Every, everybody kind of, everybody knows. <laughs> we all know who we're talking about. A uh, high salary guy that could probably flip to a different team and kind of kind of give him away, uh, just to kind of clear up cap for kind of an improvement in the rotation. But uh, yeah, I think you're right. Other than that, probably right-handed bat. A uh, little teaser, uh, that non-tender from the Reds looks kind of attractive. I don't know. Nick Senzel. Oh, Nick, yeah, I should have. Yeah, Nick Senzel makes sense. Um, yeah, let's not spoil that too much. But, I, yeah, I, I, te- I, I, tend, to, I tend to agree. Um, but, no, I think it's going to be a, a pretty quiet offseason season. Dombrowski seems to have matured to the point where he realizes that just continuously throwing money at a team doesn't always make it better. Um, I think he's going to yeah. be a little craftier and look to other avenues for improvement. Um, but I don't think he's done. So it's, it, it's tricky. It's, it's a tough off season already um, to kind of predict, but uh, I guess, yeah, we'll get back soon and we'll kind of break down how we, yeah, think it's we'll actually back next week. Goal. Now that uh, I, I think, the starting pitching market. I think the whole market's kind of start moving this week. Uh, I think everyone's just waiting on Otani, um, the, the big the big fish. Uh, I'm honestly fish. thrilled to see where he lands. It's, I mean, he's greatest player in baseball right now. A lot to look forward to, guys. Uh, that's all I got, Josh. Yeah, I tend to agree. Um, that should kind of do it for this episode. Welcome back, Knowles. Um, Welcome back, can't wait buddy. to see you. Opening day, probably. He'll probably get the start again. I think they'll just keep rolling him out there because he's getting near um, the opening day start record, I think. It's, it's going to take over a lot of records in the next uh, seven years. Yeah, he's um, assuming he stays the course. I mean, you're talking about an all-time Phillies career if he can continue doing what he's yeah. been doing. Um, but right I'm glad he's collective. back. Yeah, I'm glad he's back. And um, – As always, thank you guys for listening, and we will be back soon to talk about what else we think is going to happen. So thank you guys.